I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the Money Thing. As I've said in previous series, the church spends so much time trying to protect themselves from the devil, right? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, protect. But the Bible says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Now, the gates of hell are his defense. So what it's saying is, uh, the church has all the authority, friend. There's nothing you have that can stop the authority of the kingdom. Jesus defeated you. But to do that, we have to understand in Mark chapter 16, we are commanded to not be on defense, but to do what? What's the word there he says? To go. To go. And where are you to go? Well, all of us have assignments, but basically we're to wade right in there. The Bible says cast out demons, lay hands on the sick. We are on an assignment for God. And so I want to talk about that today further. Last week I showed you that video of the thunderclap, which is, is a powerful moment in my life and, a, and a, of course, an encouraging one. But there's a couple things we didn't talk about. I'd like to show it to you one more time and talk about it. In my Bible, in a very difficult day, I had a dream one night. I wrote the dream in the front of my Bible because this is what the dream was. I was standing on a hill with a sword in my hand. Below me was an entire army with their swords raised at me. And the, the word of the Lord, a voice in my dream says this, don't underestimate yourself, Gary. And in that dream, I took my sword and I began to scream the word Thor, T-H-O-R, Thor! And I began to run down the hillside towards this army by myself with my sword extended. And I thought, I, I, we have some people in the church that understand languages. I said, what is, the, what is that all about? What is the word Thor? And he said, it's a son of thunder. It's about thunder. Don't underestimate yourself. When the enemy sees you coming, Gary, it sounds like thunder. I wrote that. <laughs> is that really thunder? Is that you guys? <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yes! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Thank you! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah! <laughs> see it. The devil can't tell who you are. Don't tell him, man. You're anointed. You can take the whole army out. You sound like thunder. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. That was awesome. Well, let's remember, God gave me that dream in a hard time. That was actually a dream of instruction he was giving me. And so I want to I go through that with you a little bit because he was telling me how to handle it. And he's telling us how to handle it, right? We need to know how to handle it, uh, how to, situations, you know? So, son of thunder. That's, I like that, son of thunder. Psalms, and that was before the, the, one of the, what do you call it, Avengers came out. <laughs> Thor, you know. <laughs> Thor, yeah. Psalm 68, 33. To him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, who thunders with a mighty voice. Every time you hear about God's voice in the Bible, it, it, it talks about it as being like thunder. And so when you are speaking God's word, the devil can't tell anything about it except it's God's word. And to him, it sounds like what? Now understand, I was saying it. So again, this is instruction. I was on top of that hill. Remember the sword is what? The sword is the weapon, is what? Where's the word at? In your mouth. So I was running down that hill speaking. God was telling me, Gary, you've got to handle the situation. You've got to get in there. 
with the authority of my word. That's what he was showing me. Number two, you have a choice. You can back up or go forward. I was running down the hill towards the problem, towards the conflict. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Don't we tend to try to avoid conflict? But friend, when you avoid conflict, you set, the enemy's setting you up. How many have found out when you avoid conflict, it just gets worse? Yes, it does. The enemy is working his stuff behind the scenes when you avoid advancing in conflict with the word of truth. When you run straight at the enemy with the authority of God's word, it takes him off guard, throws him off. And he runs in terror. That's what the Bible says. He runs in terror. He moves away from you. Now you've heard of King David, of course, uh, David and Goliath, very, very popular story. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 41. Let's take a look at this story quickly. Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David. Now remember, Goliath is like nine something feet high. He's a professional warrior. David's a shepherd. He has no weapon. King Saul tried to give him his weapon, but he said, no, it didn't fit. I don't, I don't need that. He's a shepherd. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? Because why? David was holding his shepherd's staff on purpose. What else did he have? A sling. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said. I'll give your flesh to the birds and to the wild animals. This is how Satan operates. He's going to try to intimidate you. He's going to prophesy to you your end. He's going to prophesy to you the problems. He's going to talk about you're nothing and you have no power. It's going to be horrible, going to end horrible, right? But notice what verse 45 said and what God was showing me in that vision, that dream. David, what's the second word in that scripture? Verse 45, help me out. David said to what? To the problem. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I'll strike you down and cut off your head. We need to talk like that. <laughs> this very day I'll give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God of in, in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he'll give all of you into our hands. It is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That applies to you. As the Philistine moved closer to attack David. Now, again, you have a choice right here. The enemy is going to keep moving closer and closer. See, let me help you understand. Fear always backs up. It gives up territory. It gives up authority. As the enemy moves closer, what typically happens? If it's an enemy bigger than you, stronger than you, people back up. That's why Ephesians 6, which we just read, said, stand your ground. We don't back up. We have the authority. Satan's intimidating, trying to pressure you to back up. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, please notice what David did. This is so vital to your future. David ran, how fast? Quickly, where? Toward Goliath. David ran toward Goliath with a staff. Reaching to his bag, he took a stone out. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead knocked him out, and David cut his head off. Praise God. Now, there are lessons in this story. What if David would have been afraid and decided to march around Goliath for maybe an hour or so as he kept taunting him and he's playing with him until he finally figured out how to move in on him or tried to figure out? What would have happened? He would have eventually seen what? Come on, help me out. He would have eventually seen the sling. He didn't see the sling. All he saw was the, you come at me with a stick. See, the staff was carried as a decoy. 
The sling was God's supernatural strategy. This is how you are to operate. If he would have waited, he would have, Goliath would have figured it out. This is what's recorded in 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter. That if Satan would have known the plan of God, he would have never killed Jesus. See, your offensive advantage is a supernatural strategy operated quickly with intent and courage and authority. If you hang back, friend, you've already lost. In light of that story, let me say this. In our culture right now, we're lacking true heroes. Oh, we have heroes on the movie screen. We have to make the made up ones. This world needs real heroes. They're not afraid of the conflict. They'll take their authority and march into that thing with righteousness and the word of God and deal with the enemy. Which ultimately translates into people and all issues. I mean, you, we are not called to sit in this church building and just patty cake and place God and say it's great. Amen. We are called of God to go out there and make a difference in people's lives. And so the enemy, I mean, the enemy runs. He's actually taken it back. When you step up in authority and and righteous anger or righteousness, and you begin to declare truth, he's taken back. He backs off in a hurry. God commands you to hold your ground. The devil needs to see you as fearless. He'll stay away from your house. Your family needs to see you as fearless. Your town needs to know you're fearless. Your company, your coworker, they need to know you're not one that's going to back down. But that you're one that has the answer, supernatural strategies by the Holy Spirit, and you're going to march in there with an answer. You're going to help all of them. And I, I like to say, actually, there's only one kind of leader, a fearless one. The rest are just titles. 